Thank you, Carl. Our final speaker for the day is Dr Andrew Climby from the Emergency Department at the Royal Hobart Hospital. Thanks, guys. I got thrown the hot potato yesterday to talk to you, and I've prepared a 10-minute talk, and I've been told I've got five minutes, so I have to talk really quickly. Just very briefly, can we get a show of hands? Anyone's got their P plates? Put their hand up. Keep them up. Who's got their L2s? Keep them up. L1s? Right, so it's most of you. I've been working in emergency departments for about 25 years now, and I also work a day or two a week coordinating medical retrievals around Tasmania, and I was ambulance service medical officer for a number of years. My wife got home in the very early hours of this morning after being in the operating theatre with a 21-year-old who had a car crash last night with severe head injuries, so I'm surrounded by this stuff all the time. I've got two kids, Samantha, who finished here last year, and Alistair the year before, both on P2s, and knowing what I know, I'm always a little anxious when they go on a road trip and I make sure they take our good car. The two kids have had the concept of situational awareness hammered into them since they were born. Now, paramedics learn when they bring me patients, I ask lots of questions about the mechanics of the crash. As you get specific injuries from certain forces and certain directions of forces, that you can only exclude by doing a specific test. I'm going to today to try and teach you a few concepts to keep you alive over the next few years. I'm not trying to scare you or upset you, but I'm going to use a few really sad examples all the victims I knew or I know their parents. All these parents are diminished and some were almost destroyed themselves. You won't understand that until you have kids of your own. No names, but Hobart's a very small place, so profuse apologies if it's someone who's related to you or you know. Car can be a fun thing to drive. It's not a toy or a play thing. It's an efficient way to get from A to B. Despite being invincible at 17 or 18, nasty things can happen to you. You're far more likely to get killed in a car crash than being beaten, eaten by a white pointer or killed by terrorists. So point number one, as you've heard from these other professionals here, we're trying to get away from the concept of a car accident. It's always a crash, as it's just about always some human error. Driving too aggressively for the conditions or your skill, being inattentive, having bored tyres, so we need to start taking responsibility. Crashes are not accidents and they can be prevented. Point number two, a bit of schooling here. A car crash is applied physics. KE K e equals a half mv squared. Familiar to all of you? So if you double the velocity from 50 kilometres an hour in Argyle Street to 100 kilometres an hour in the end of the Brooker, the amount of energy that has to be dissipated through the car and through your body doesn't double, it increases four times. That's why speed kills. You survive a head-on crash or crash into a pole in a modern car in downtown Hobart. You likely won't if you're here to tread 100, 120 kilometres an hour. So highway speed is much more dangerous, especially if the approaching cars aren't separated by barriers or dual carriageways. Two sad cases to start. Two boys, just a bit older than you, driving to Launceston. Oncoming larger car, drifts over the midline, head-on crash. The boy's car is severely damaged and catches on fire. Horribly, the first paramedic on the scene, someone I know very well, was the father of one of the dead boys. So lessons from this. The larger car nearly always wins and parents get damaged too. One of our fourth year medical students was driving home to Hobart at the end of the week from clinical placement in Launceston. And she was seen by people driving behind her to slowly veer off the road. She likely fell asleep at the wheel and drove straight into a tree. She was dead at the scene. If she had instead just run into a fence or a paddock, she would have survived. So physics again, it's not how fast you're going that matters, it's how fast you stop. Think of a bug hitting your windscreen but you don't stop so fast if you weren't going so fast to start with. Another lesson, if you are tired or drunk, don't drive, especially at highway speeds. And for those of you that go to Utahs and Launceston next year, take the bus, especially at the end of a tiring week, or at least get some company to drive back with, keep you awake, it would have saved that girl's life. Case number three, our family went to the Gold Coast for 2008 to work and couldn't take our dog. One of the nurses at my work offered to look after her and their farm near Hewinville. Now, her 18-year-old daughter 
who actually looked after the dog was in year 12 here in Hobart, and she got a lift each day with a school friend. But one winter morning, even though not speeding, the friend lost control and black ice near Vince's saddle and spun into the path of an oncoming car, which unfortunately collected them in the passenger door. And she died in our emergency department with her mum there, who was one of their nurses. This lesson, speed signs are an indication only. You have to slow down when conditions are poor, such as ice, rain, dusk, and going around corners. Lesson two, it is much, much more dangerous to be T-boned than to have a front-end crash. So when you're driving and you're waiting to turn right across the traffic and you think you can get through the gap, think again, because if you don't, your passenger's going to collect it in the side. Which leads to case four. There's a driver stopped on the old Midlands Highway, patiently waiting to turn right into a side road at Baghdad. And like many of you do, he'd already turned the wheel ready to go to the right. But unfortunately, an inattentive driver rang up the back of him, and rather than shunting him forward, because the wheel was already turned, he shunted him around as the truck came and collected him. He died now ED too. So the lesson, never ever turn your wheel while waiting to cross traffic. It's really important. Straight ahead. Case five, four boys in a car driving on Sandy Bay Road lose control. Crash and the son of a doctor colleague of mine was killed in Sandy Bay Road. Lesson, inattention, mucking around, distraction kills. And the statistics show that four teenagers in a car are much more likely to crash than if there were just two in the car. Case six, more inattention. At the very end of 12 years of school, five years of hard university study, her career assured, finally medical students late to the end of exams party. So she puts on her makeup while driving up Blackman's Bay Road in the 100K zone. She drifts over the midline, hits the bigger vehicle in the other way, kills herself and injures the oncoming driver. And not many of you would put makeup on while you're driving, but I wonder how many of you are stupid enough to text or read messages in the car while you're driving. It's illegal for a very good reason. There is some good news. Cars are far safer now than they were when I finished school. Designed with a rigid passenger compartment and a crumple zone in front to absorb the impact. Seatbelt pretensions hold you tight and airbags are fantastic. We used to see horrible facial injuries from particularly girls sitting in the windscreen and they're scarred for life. Why girls rather than boys? All you drivers, I want you to show me how you drive. Put your hands up as if you're on the wheel. Just hold the wheel. Now look around at everyone and you see the girls drive like this, the boys drive like that. So girls, you got to, when you get home, put the seat one click further back and next month do it again. You should be driving with your wrists over the top of the wheels because when those airbags go off, they'll hit you really hard. Roads are safer too, especially divided highways. Now, choosing a car. A lot of you will be thinking about buying a car, choosing a car in the next few years. Let me tell you, it's much better to borrow your parents. It'll be more expensive and safer than what you can afford, and really important if you're on, at highway speeds. The rating system, the ANCAP rating, is really misleading. It indicates how you'd survive in that car driving into a tree or a pole, and that's important. But if you're a careful driver, it's more likely any crash you're in will be someone driving into you. A Barina has a better ANCAP rating than an old Land Cruiser, but I can tell you which one will come off best in a crash. So to survive being hit, and this is politically incorrect and I'm a greenie and I shouldn't be saying it, have a heavier, higher vehicle than the other guy with lots of airbags. And don't get hit in the side. If you do, hope your parents paid for the model with the side airbags. Last case, me. I'm still alive. Years ago, coming back from a weekend paddling on the Helia River with four kayaks on the roof of our old Subi, at dusk, small country road, fairly quick driver, wife and I in the back seat, suddenly a suicidal wallaby hops across the road and Brad swerves to miss it, overcorrects, loses control, and we end up well off the road in the bushes. What saved us? Pure luck. We had stopped slowly, so we walked away unhurt, though chastened. We could have rolled, which would be much worse, or we could have hit one of the trees on either side where we went. And we would have ended up as strawberry custard. 
I could go on for hours, but there's no more time, so I'll stop. I haven't even mentioned alcohol and drugs or motorbikes, which is something that doesn't need mention. But to quickly summarise a few little points to take home. Be mature and aware that a moving car is dangerous and not the place to party. Avoid highway travel, especially if conditions are poor. Take mum and dad's car if travelling at speed. Use your common sense. Drive for the conditions. Slow down if they're poor and at dusk when there's animals about. If an animal runs out in front of you, brake hard, but keep the wheels dead straight until you've slowed right down. Better the possum gets squashed than you get killed. Drive with a safe posture, not too close to the steering wheel. Your parents will come and get you. They might whinge, but they do not want you to drive if you've been drinking. Either that will hit them for a taxi fare. Don't let your friends drive if they've been drinking. Keep the front wheels straight when waiting to turn across traffic. Of course, always use a seatbelt and be especially controlled with mobile phones when driving. Thanks very much. Uh, so thank you, Andrew. Um, so many of you won't be aware, but um, the school is actually working on a master plan document, so a plan of action for the coming 10 years. Um, it investigates making improvements to facilities and a traffic impact study, which is um, been undertaken to assess the strategic changes to the two campuses. Uh, it will provide recommendations in regard to parking, access provision, drop-off, pick-up, sustainable transport, road safety and servicing provision. A, high, a traffic engineer has been employed to outline the existing situation with regards to traffic flow and includes information relating to the surrounding road network, accident history, school hours, student and staff numbers, public transport services, existing car parking, drop-off and pick-up facilities. It is aiming to reduce delays and congestion and improve safety to pedestrians, drivers, passengers and cyclists. But as we have mentioned in our workshop meetings, there needs to be a cultural change in the behaviour of some members of our community who currently work against the already installed safety elements around the school. As members of the road safety group, we invited our compliance and risk managers from, the friend, from friends and to be members of our group and we hope that they will have some input into the traffic management and safety issues as they prepare policy around the school. Uh, hopefully everyone here has taken um, some serious messages from these guys, um, so can we please thank them once again. <laughs>